So hello, hello everyone. So in today's video, I want to discuss some of the things that will absolutely ruin your landscape photography, your landscape photography day. And yeah, just share a lot of things that you can optimize as to have a better chance of getting the good photos. So back in December, I was in a two weeks workshop, or two weeks, two workshops, two weeks back to back with Nick Page in the Faroe Islands. And we had a lot of lovely clients. It was two fantastic weeks. But I also saw some of the mistakes, uh, things that you can optimize to yeah, be better at getting the shot when it manifests. And the first thing is to be fast. And here I'm not necessarily talking about that you have to have long legs to do landscape photography because you walk faster. What I mean is that you don't spend five to 10 minutes getting ready each time you have to go out and take landscape photos. Make sure that once you arrive on location that you can basically just go and grab your camera backpack and you can start hiking. If you are spending five to 10 minutes getting ready, that is time you will lose out on scouting your locations before the great light happens, let's say sunsets or sunrises. And you don't want to miss out on that because you can probably always optimize a little bit, especially if you do not exactly know the location. So make sure that you're ready the evening before and that your camera backpack, that your rain clothing and you have all the gear, all the layers ready to when you're going out and shooting, when you arrive on location, you don't have to spend five minutes to put on 10 layers of extra clothing. So be faster. So today is actually a day of scouting. There may be a small chance of a sunset, but it's not really what I've set out to do. I'm just out scouting some new locations because consider it, it's more than three months since I moved over here to Sealand, the largest island in Denmark. Uh, I've had surprisingly little time to actually go and do some proper landscape photography exploring. So that's what I'm going to do today while I am talking with you guys about optimizing uh, so you can avoid ruining your landscape photography days. <laughs> the next thing I noticed from one of uh, our clients in the Faroe Islands was that, yeah, Gina, <laughs> you weren't completely ready with your camera when we were on location. You had to get to know your camera again. It has been a long time since you've been shooting with it. And obviously, it's a good idea to know your camera when you're out shooting, so you're not standing fiddling around with the settings, having forgot how to put your camera into bracketing mode, how to change the aperture, how to focus on a specific place in, in the scene. The best way to actually make sure that you get back in the habit of how your camera functions is the day before, the night before, maybe in the airplane to so the place that you are photographing, take it in your hand, use it, fiddle around with the buttons, go into menu systems, what does what do? Look back at your old photos, how did you get that photo with that camera? Oh, you put it into bracket mode, maybe I need to remember how I put it into bracket mode, all those small things. So optimize by don't fiddling around with your camera, know how it works, know what bottoms do what. And on the note on fiddling with your camera, make sure that you shoot in RAW, always shoot in RAW. So one of our clients on the second workshop, on the first morning, for some reason, he managed to underexpose all his photos by like three stops or so. Not entirely sure how that happened, but as he had been shooting everything in RAW, and he is also using a fairly modern camera, he actually managed to just go into Lightroom and bring out all those details of those very, very underexposed photos. Now, obviously with the penalty of a lot more noise, but nevertheless, he still had pretty decent photos. So absolutely make sure to always shoot in RAW, at the very least, just to make sure that if something happens with your settings, if, if you screw up the settings, you can go in and save most of it in Lightroom. So 
So another thing that you absolutely have to optimize and you definitely want to avoid because else your entire photography day will be ruined and that is to have your systems, your backpack, everything optimized so you don't make brainless mistakes such as leaving your camera batteries at home in the charger. Always make sure that you have your batteries in the same place so you can fast check wherever you have the camera batteries and you have put them back in your backpack. When I come home, I always charge my camera, my batteries, if they are less than 50%. Like the Sony batteries are pretty good, so I can go for an entire photo shoot with only 50% battery. That's my experience. Always charge them. When it's done charging, I put it back in my backpack at the right Place. I optimize my spacing here. I know it looks like chaos right here, but I know exactly where everything is. I know where my microphone is, I know where my filter is, my first aid kit, my lenses. Everything has its proper slot in the camera backpack. I of course know where my tripod is. Right now it's underneath my camera. However, because I'm using a small tripod, I always attach it to my camera backpack. If I have my big tripod, I always have it next to my camera backpack so that I never, ever, ever forget my tripod. Neither back home when I go out for a photo shoot in the morning or when I leave the car when I've gone to a location, I know that I have my backpack uh, properly in order with the tripod attached to it. So make sure that your systems are in order and they are optimized so they work for you. So you don't forget your tripod, right Gina? <laughs> so you don't forget your camera batteries, right Sam? And make sure that your gear are in order and it functions so you have proper quality gear so you do not compromise on a lousy tripod ball head where the camera comes off and tumbles down a cliff and falls 300 meters down into the Atlantic Ocean. Right, Mark? So another fast little tip is to always bring crampons, those with small spikes on. This is obviously a tip for mainly winter locations and places with frozen ground, because it just makes you so much more shoe on your feet. It makes you much more efficient at getting from point A to point B so you don't have to go around and be careful that you that you slip. And obviously there's also a risk that if you have your camera out of your camera backpack and you slip and you break your gear and break everything and then your photography day is over before it even started. So make sure to at the very least bring crampons and you can always decide whether or not to put them on. Come in many shapes and sizes, just make sure that you use those with spikes on, not those with, I don't even know what this metal here is called in English, but spikes. Spikes are good. And I know some of you out there may be just like, oh, that's not necessary unless you go to Iceland. Yeah, well, we really needed them and benefited from them in the Faroe Islands. And I have been to a lot of locations in Denmark during winter where I would definitely have benefited from such crampons. So get some and bring them. So I just wanted to come back to the studio because the next tips or the next mistakes to avoid or whatever we call it <laughs> is something I want to visualize with some of my photos from the Faroe Islands. And another thing you definitely just have to have in mind, obviously I talk about composition on this channel like literally every video, but it does make sense. And the one thing I want you to take away from this that can ruin basically all your photos is to not think holistically. I have mentioned it a few times on this channel, but the point is that you need to think of everything <laughs> that is within your frame when you take the photo. There is nothing worse than capturing the most amazing moment and then you have some branch going in or you don't have enough foreground or yeah well you capture the moment but the composition just completely lacks and i want to show you with a, with a few examples right here so here is from one of the last days in the faroe islands and we just had this absolutely fantastic weather with a huge high sea and yeah it, it was just fantastic and as you can see right here there's actually a wave coming in and hitting the rocks here in front of us and you can see how it just hits 
right here and just blows up and you can see how much wind there is actually also there and it's just coming closer and closer and closer and suddenly panic and we were just like yeah we didn't see that one coming uh, it hit a little bit of our camera gear so i had to go back and find a, a cloth to just wipe off uh, the water and at that moment one of the biggest waves of the day actually hits here in, in the background and as you can see I am completely not ready to take that photo because the composition is not optimal in any way shape or form. Well you can argue that there's balance in the photo but you can see down here I think this is a little part of a person or maybe a jacket right here and then I of course have uh, some of the clients standing right here. I did capture the moment, but as you can see, the composition lacks quite a lot. Yes, with a lot of Photoshop, I can probably remove uh, the guy standing over here, but it's not really worth it uh, to, to, to do that. At some point, we also went further out to the little tip, which is all the way out here. And one of the things I, I really tried to get through to one of the participants, Sam, I hope you're doing good, was to focus on incorporating a little bit more of the foreground because you're standing out here and the default way of thinking was, of course, that you wanted to capture the waves hitting the, the sea stack out here, which were incredible. But you have a tendency maybe to get lost in that moment because it's so incredible that you forget to think about the entire photo, thinking holistically. And this is a good example where I have a little bit of the foreground right here, but it's not really adding neither depth or foreground or context or anything. It's just there, it's different, and it's a little bit actually annoying. Maybe the photo would actually be better even without foreground in this example here. However, I do have an example here, a vertical version, where I've included some foreground. And in my opinion, that creates a little bit more depth, it creates a little bit more context for the photo. So absolutely always be sure to think holistically, no matter how amazing the moment is, you want to have an entire photo that works. So the next tip is of course about editing, because that's also a thing I talk about all the time. And one of the participants came with a pretty interesting question that I haven't heard before, but he framed it something like he was unsure about uh, what presets to use and when to use them. And when you think about it, that question kind of implies that there is some kind of like, you know, objective right way to use presets or at least to edit your photos. And my answer to him was something like, the, the problem with thinking like that is that you are locking yourself down to someone else's editing style. Obviously, you can always change things when you have applied a preset, but there was kind of like this idea that there is like an objective right way of editing a specific photo. And to a certain degree, I would say that obviously you do not want to like blow out all your highlights in the entire photo or to totally underexpose it. So there is, of course, something we can optimize towards. That's what I'm trying to teach. It's not completely subjective in, in that sense. Like there, there is some kind of like something we aim towards, something we aspire towards. But there's, of course, also a huge um, spectrum we can work within where we can apply our own style and our own way of wanting to show the specific photo uh, in the end. And, and that is obviously what I try to teach you all with my Photoshop course, Photoshop for landscape photographers from beginner to advanced, that you can use all the tools that I teach you and then you can apply them use those you want to use and disregard the rest. That's basically the entire idea. And, and I think it's very important to realize this. Obviously, when I started out with landscape photography and had to learn to edit, I had those I aspired to edit as. And I remember at one point I really started to edit a lot like 
Um, or I wanted to move towards how my good friend Nick Page is editing and Ted Gore is editing and Ryan Dyer is editing. They are all phenomenal when it comes to post-processing. But the problem is that adapting or adopting that style, uh, I remove a lot of myself. So I kind of stopped myself in ad- adopting too much of that style and tried to like figure out what I wanted to do. It, I'm not sure you can even see that I have a style when you go through my portfolio. But nevertheless, the point is that adopt a lot of different tools and then apply what you want to apply. Learn how you can add different effects or highlight different things in your photos and avoid to do specific mistakes that you generally do not want to make in your photos when you edit your photos. So if you want to obviously learn about Photoshop, uh, for landscape photographers it is still like Photoshop is the program to use then you can enroll in my course there's a link down in the description um, I try to teach you everything that I know about Photoshop obviously check out my ebooks on composition if you want to learn even more about composition uh, there are also links down in the description and uh, yeah I, I, I think that was it for this video uh, with the release of this video I'm probably on my way to Antarctica with uh, Nigel Danson, James Popsies, Adam Gibbs, and Alan Wallace. Uh, sadly, Sarah Lindsay uh, couldn't come due to, like, you know, the, <laughs> the current world state, which is so sad. But uh, yeah, in the f- three, four weeks, there should come some content from Antarctica, which um, I'm quite excited about. I'm not entirely sure <laughs> what to expect from going to Antarctica, but uh, it looks pretty, pretty epic. On uh, from from the photos uh, I've seen from there and from the videos I've seen from there. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Check out all the links down in the description. I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment. And see you in the next one.